Hello everybody, my name is Maureen. I'm originally from Kenya, currently residing in Switzerland. I've lived in Switzerland for the last 10 years. I'm a nurse by profession, hence the interest in the nursing field for those who are trained in non-EU countries. So I was trained in Kenya and I had to go through the recognition process in Switzerland. And so I would love to help those who'd like to do the same, get their process through, especially for those who are not French speakers. So Swiss Red Cross is responsible for the recognition process. That is one thing you must know. And for this recognition process, there are a couple of documents that the Swiss Red Cross will ask you for. These are also listed on their website. For those who already speak French or German, depending on which canton you reside in, you can check these details. So I will make uh, a brief uh, explanation of this process. And then if you find fit, you can go to their website and check other detailed information from there. So what are the recognition documents that you need? The first and foremost document that you must have is a work permit. So be it a B permit, a C permit, you need a work permit, a valid work permit to be precise. You need a valid nursing license. Now, for example, if you come from a country that renews licenses, like in my country, Kenya, that's not the case with Switzerland. Once you have your nursing license, you have it, it's not renewed. But um, if you have this process of renewal, make sure that it's valid and it's not almost expiring because that will pose you problems. The third document is your nursing diploma, your nursing degree. And here I'll also include things like your transcripts uh, and other documents that you got during your nursing training. So. When you give these documents, they also need a document that entails the number of hours you spent in the practical part of your training and the number of hours you spent in the theoretical part of your training. So the practical part is the actual patient care. How many hours did you spend in that, for example, in pediatrics and how many hours did you spend in theory? That is something I didn't have, but if you consult your institution usually you'll get something you have a bull, bulletin or something like that and you can always get this uh, information from that document then there's the certificate of current professional status so this document is like a certificate it is a certificate of good standing in other words so this is meant to protect the patients so that if you had done something wrong in your country you don't come to Switzerland and try to, to get into the system and be a nurse again while in your country you're stopped from doing that. So this is something that they need. And all these documents should be either in English, German, Italian or French. So let's say you're someone who trained in an Arabian country, you have to translate your documents from Arabic to any of these four languages. So I will briefly discuss the certificate of good standing because this is a document that personally posed some problems to me. I didn't know about it. So um, when you have to ask for it from the body that is going to issue it, you have to be able to explain to them what is needed. So what should appear on this document? First and foremost, your name as is on your documents, nursing documents, your profession or formation, so what you trained in, are you a Bachelor of Science nurse? Uh, are you, did you do a diploma in nursing? That has to be stated. And then declaration relative to eventual sanctions. Did you do something bad? Did you do something bad that stops you from practicing as a nurse? And if you didn't, they have to declare that as well. And name of the issuing authority, like in my country, I would, I, the name of the issuing authority would be the Nursing Council of Kenya. Then this document should also have the signature of the authorities giving it, and it should not be more than three months old. I have just remembered something that I missed in the documents required. You also need um, 
a work certificate. So like if you worked somewhere after your training, you need this work certificate. And in this work certificate, there should be um, how did you work full time or did you work part time? So I know in, in most African countries, it's either you're working or you're not working. So there's nothing like 50% and, but other countries that like maybe uh, Canada or I don't know, maybe it's different. They also have the percentage. So this should be stated and your CV also will be needed among the documents that you will provide. But usually they have a kind of um, formulated CV that is easier for you. So you just have to fill in uh, when you studied, when you worked and it's a fill in the blanks kind of uh, CV. Okay, so I realized uh, just recently that there are some exemptions to the certificate of good standing. But then with these exemptions comes also some obligations. So let me tell you the exemptions. If you have practiced in your profession, which is nursing in Switzerland for more than five years, first when I read this, it didn't make sense to me. But then I realized that the nurses that were working from non-EU countries before did not go through the same process that we have right now. So you find that there are some nurses who maybe uh, came from the US and have already worked in Switzerland for 20 years. So then for them, they're exempted from giving this document. Then your country of study or work does not have a registration body. Like now in Switzerland, the registration body is Swiss Red Cross. You don't have something like that in your country. So then you don't have a registry. So then you're exempted from that. You have never worked in your country of training. So you finished school and straight away you had to come to Switzerland. Then you don't need to bring this document. But then what is needed in case of exemption? That's the other part. So you need a certificate uh, from a recognized body in your country stating that you don't have a registry for nurses, for registered nurses. And this I think maybe you can get from if you have a Ministry of Health in your country, if you have a Ministry of Foreign Affairs, they should be able to give you this document. Then you need to give a certificate of good conduct from your country that is not more than three months. The recognition process, let's get into it. You need to be at a level B2 in either of these languages. So this really depends on the canton you're living in. So if you're living in a French speaking canton, it's between French, German speaking canton, it's B2 in German, Italian speaking canton, it's B2 in Italian language. Now, I've seen people asking before that should I be this level B2 before starting or not? And this is my personal advice. I would advise you to be at at least level B1 when starting the process. And this will, my explanation and my reasoning will, will be understood at the end of this. It's not a must. You can decide and start when you are at A1. You can decide and start when you don't speak a word of French and have someone help you fill in the forms and do everything, but that will penalize you later. So I would advise you to be at least at le the least minimum at A2 level when starting the process. And then you will not be trapped. But if you can be at a B2 level, that's the best you can do to yourself. Step one is fill in the pre-check form which is found on the Swiss Red Cross website. And this is a preliminary process. Like this is the first step that everyone has to go through. But the good news is it's free. So you go through this process and in this process, they check all your documents and they see whether it's worth it proceeding with your documents or it's a case that won't go anywhere. And therefore they'll advise you on what else you can do. So this is an important process. After you've sent this um, form, this pre-check form, and now it's good, it's done online. When I did it, we had to send all the paperwork and stuff. Then you get your response. If there are chances of you getting your 
uh, degree or nursing diploma recognized, they will respond and tell you it's possible. So in this case, I will deal with the ones that are possible. The ones that are not possible, I don't know what happens. So then here in the second step, you will pay 600 Swiss francs for experts to now check your documents thoroughly. And this can take three to four months. Please make sure you send all the documents they ask you for. Otherwise, you'll have unnecessary delays. So three to four months. So after this three to four months, you will get two possible decisions. So the first decision is a partial decision, which is also indirect decision. And this is, you have to meet some compensatory measures since your training presents some differences to that of the Swiss system. So this is the first possibility. The second possibility is the direct decision. So um, I'll go to the partial decision first because the direct decision doesn't have much to explain, but the partial decision has more into it. Since your training presents some differences to that of the Swiss system, they will tell you either of these four things. You need to do an internship, what they call stage d'adaptation in the French speaking part. And this can vary in duration. It depends on how they've looked at your documents and uh, how they see that it's, it has differences to the Swiss system. So you can have this internship for three months, six months. I've even uh, had people who have done it for one year. Personally, I had to do it for six months. Then the second thing, and, and this internship, it's you to find the place to do it. They don't help you find a place to do it. In my next video, I will discuss with you some things that you can do so that you get this internship places easily. And then the second thing is complementary courses. So they have stipulated centers that offer these courses. In French parts, it's only one uh, center and that is, that is called the Espace Compétence, that is in the in Kui, in the Grandville region. So that's where even people who are coming from Geneva have to go to. And the third is you have to do both internship and complementary courses. I had to do this third option. I had to do the, the stage d'adaptation, which is the internship, and also take courses in Kui. And then the fourth, is you take an exam. I've not yet met someone who, who had to take an exam and finish with everything, but if there's anyone who has done that, maybe you can give us your, your experience in the comment section down below. It would be interesting to know. So this is called in French, une épreuve d'aptitude. So that's an exam. From this point that you've gotten this decision, you have two years to meet the requirements. And this is why I suggested learning the language before starting the process. So I want to give you, for example, my case. I was given this indirect um, option and I had to do the internship and I had to do the courses, the complementary courses. So now these courses run over a period of time. So you'll see when they give you, I will put... Um, a link to, to this course in Kui, for example, you'll see that they say the course is 30 day course, but then it's spread through the year. So like you'll have maybe two times a month, you'll have classes, which is very good for people who are working and people like me who had to do the internship. You have time to work and attend the classes and time to revise and do your things like that. So it really worked well and it's a thing that I really like that I really recommend. But if you don't speak French, so if you went to the first option of starting without speaking French, when you have to do these lessons, they're in French. Everything is in French. You, no one will come and ask you, est-ce que vous parlez français? Uh, je vais vous donner quelques cours en anglais. 
No, it's purely in French. And you have to do a written exam, you have to do a presentation, you have to participate in class, you have to read in class, you have to do um, interact with others, and you cannot do this if you don't speak French. And when you do the written exam, it determines whether you succeed the process or not, and you cannot go there when you can barely write a word in French. So that's why I say two years is not a long time. And this is this course is, I think if I'm not wrong, it's offered once a year or twice a year in uh, Espace Competence. So then if it's offered once a year, if I'm right that it's offered once a year, then you have two years and you don't know the language, you'll have to take a year to learn the language and then you'll be very tight in presenting your papers to be finalized, for your process to be finalized. But to be on the safe side, learn your French. And in the next video also, I will uh, help you understand ways that as a health worker, you can learn French faster and therefore make the process faster for you. So I've dwelled too much on that, but I just had to put that out there, that learning the language is very important before starting the process. So once you've finished all this, you've done your stage d'adaptation, which is the internship, and you're finished with the process, then you're going to send the proof of accomplishment. So you usually when you do the stage d'adaptation, they will give you a document signed by the person who's responsible for your internship, and you also have to sign on it. And usually you'll have like a discussion and they'll tell you what they found that you did well, what you should work on. They'll encourage you on what is uh, better for you to, to, to maybe courses that you should take, if you should take courses, that kind of appraisal. If you find a nice person, that is, I, I found an excellent person who took me through that. And so that document will be sent to the Red Cross and also your certificate from the complementary courses. After you've done the exam, after you've done the practicals, everything finished, they'll give you a certificate that you should send to the Red Cross. So once you send this certificate to the Red Cross, you will pay again another 400 francs to finish the process and another 130 um, Swiss francs for you to be registered in the National Health Register, which is called NAREG. So, up to this point, you are now recognized as a Swiss nurse. Now, those who had the direct option, I have seen this direct option mostly with the people from Canada and uh, Philippines, but that's just from what I've seen on YouTube. It's really up to Swiss Red Cross to decide whether they give you the direct or indirect option. Maybe the final bit of this video, how much is the total cost so this will really vary, but it, it really doesn't vary that much. So the thing for people who get the direct decision, it's clear cut. There's no surprises. You'll pay a total of 1,060 Swiss francs. Now, for people who get indirect decision like I did, you will pay a total of 7,600 Swiss francs. Now, this is not including the fact that you have to do the stage d'adaptation because when you do the stage d'adaptation uh, you have to also calculate the cost you will use when driving to the place and all those kind of costs those you have to put in mind so that's that's something that adds to the total cost you will incur through the process but all in all what you'll pay if you have to get the complementary compensation to do the complementary compensation and go through the Red Cross process is 7,600. Thank you much for your time. And don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and look out for my next video. That's all for now. Adios.